And I love African dance. I, I yeah. yeah, I perform it. I do it a lot, and it's still a bit conflicting for me. And I'm still trying to see what is the right way to go about it. And I, that's why I like to talk to other dancers, but I also like to talk to people from different disciplines and to see how the topic is approached in in different areas that are still yeah. within art, um, but where. I can learn from and where I can also yeah. understand like okay how much do I need to understand something before I can perform it is it still mm. okay or is it never gonna be okay mm. can I ever understand it so it's part of yeah, um, yeah, yeah. what I'm what I'm trying to understand for myself and for others I'm Julia Beth Harris I'm a South African uh, from Cape Town and um, I've been living here in Amsterdam for 12 years now so um, yeah that's long enough for it to uh, affect my identity and for me to be like a true hybrid you were mentioning how in your writing you dare and that it can be very freeing um, my question is, how do you draw the line of what is appropriate when you dare with your words in your poetry? I don't think about what's appropriate or where it's going to fit. I let things arise mm -hmm. uh, through engaging with the topic, through letting stupid things come through my hands, allowing that, you know, it's a process. My creativity is a process of allowing. But, uh, in order to to explore for yourself, um, the intention is not uh, to please the, the ears of, of the listeners. Um, so now, if I would bring this to the context of, of, um, of dance and cultural exchange, um, I'm curious what do you think, when is it appropriate for dancers to practice and perform a dance from a different culture? And when might it be considered inappropriate? I think, uh, yeah, similarly, it's appropriate uh, It's appropriate to present something which is authentic, like to the body, mm -hmm. like, you know, um, in the same way that I allow things to arise and come through me, like that's the same way that I dance. Like, when is it appropriate to, uh, like, really take movements that you have seen from other cultures and perform that on stage. I think when it's done with intention, like, you know, and with respect and with uh, uh, credit to the community uh, that usually has um, birthed these movements out of necessity yeah. or survival, yeah. like, you know, that's always to be respected. Um, like, for example, in South Africa, um, people protest with dance it's called toy toy and like you know it's uh, like you know they have placards but it's also a lot of stamping and a lot of fists in the air you know if you if i was suddenly to go to um, hanoi uh, and see like you know this exact same movement coming through uh, without acknowledgement um, it would in my sense of humanity, it would flag an error code, like, hey, like, mm -hmm. you know, because it makes me, as someone with lived experience of that context, feel invisible. Yeah. So I think that's when it's inappropriate. If that's unintentional, then that's just sloppy, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if it is intentional and it's been overlooked, then it's inappropriate. Yeah. Um, but if it comes, like, and, and sometimes it does come... Um, it just gets channeled from muscle memory or the collective unconscious or it's natural to your body and somehow the stamping comes through and you don't know why you're doing it. That's no harm, no foul, because that's authentic, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. It's But like I was saying yesterday about uh, how identity is not something that is stagnant or uh, sedentary, it's something that is liquid uh, and travels, just like... Um, you know, like we were discussing yesterday, the anecdote about uh, the seeds of trees that have also traveled over centuries to different alien forests and thrived. Um, like, you know, these seeds will will grow where they have space. Like, um, so yeah, th that makes a case for um, authentic traveling of culture, because culture is anyways liquid, just like dance.
Lovely. Similarly with um, Amapiano, for example, that's now uh, taken the world by storm and in Amsterdam, in Amsterdam so. too, like, you know, much to my delight because I'm South African and it's, <laughs> it makes me feel at home. Yeah. How's your experience uh, going to Amapiano parties in Amsterdam? <laughs> well, first of all, great. <laughs> Because I get to be in a community, I get to uh, go to a place which is harder to come by in Amsterdam than I think many outside of Amsterdam would think, get to a place where it's about the dancing more than the holding the beer to a chest and having a conversation about the marketing team you're in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was this moment where after the party I went and I had a cigarette uh, with everyone who had been there and we were just, you know, chatting about the time we'd had and this uh, yeah, white Dutch guy was there and we were both having a cigarette and I was like, wow, great party. And he was like, yeah, we had a really good time. And I asked him, so how did you find out about the party? Because it was predominantly people of color and African diaspora people. And he was like, oh, I DJed here. And I was like, okay, like, you know, that's cool. And, you know, that's not something that I would usually take to task because I'm not really, par I wasn't really part of the creation of Amapiano. But he was like, in opening for the Amapiano DJ, he did Kwaito, a Kwaito set. And, um, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, Kwaito is the precursor of uh, Amapiano and Gom and the Afro House. That's really where the... Uh, the sound that we currently understand as Amapiano got its roots because it coincided with um, the first moment that uh, black people from the townships could actually go into, were allowed after apartheid to go into recording studios and make sounds that sounded like the ghettos. And um, that was more my generation, you know, um, and I was really part of that moment of Kwaito and one of the bands that really broke through to and, and connected cultures uh, in Cape Town was um, TKZ and they had a breakthrough album called Halloween and uh, I had missed this back to the party with this uh, Dutch guy a white Dutch guy um, in the smokers corner um, I was like oh you did a quieto set and I had missed his set and I was like wow so did you play anything by TKZ and he said oh who is that and I think for me, like for him to be in a position of power, to be cashing in, to be getting paid for his time there, to be like um, disseminating our culture, um, you know, getting that money off of a moment that he wasn't a part of um, and with no credit, with little information, uh, not really understanding, um, you know, the... Uh, yeah, that moment, that made me feel some kind of way because I felt invisible. I felt like, oh, should I be rolling up my sleeves here and getting behind the DJ booth? Is that my job now? Because otherwise it's case, you know? <laughs> like, how do you um, honor the authenticity of these genres, of these movements? How do you acknowledge um, without um, denying the nature of culture to travel? I think that's still something for which there is no solution because why can't Case experiment <laughs> with uh, these tunes like uh, in his uh, in his backyard like you know is he not allowed to express like all that of course he can but I think especially as someone with white culture it is um, this extra homework to be done when you're capitalizing off the lived experience of people who uh, develop these art forms to survive. Now uh if we are in the Netherlands and he was opening up with, with this music genre um, and perhaps there is less South Africans in the Netherlands than there are white Dutchmen, uh, where then should be the line drawn as in like, okay, you still don't know enough to do this, now you do know enough, this is still your learning journey. Does he in a way also support the movement or should he rather be then excluded and doing his homework? The Difficult. That, um, well, the, line, uh, the line that comes to mind is embrace all, exclude none. Mm. So also he is not excluded, but as long as he embraces all of his uh, craft, yeah. you know, so it's a matter of uh, homework. I think um, 
you know, culture, everyone is the steward of culture. It's, uh, you know, everyone has a responsibility to um, to push culture forward and everybody uh, plays a part in that, like, you know, no matter what your colour. Um, but I think because of the way the world is set up, because of the echoes of colonialism, capitalism, because of all that, everybody also just needs to know their role and their place in that and what heals instead of harms. Mm -hmm.